Okay guys, I am going to show you how to do a technical drawing of this top that I have here. Um, and I've got my technical croquis to use as my scale background. And I've just got some computer paper that I'm going to draw on. Um, so this is my simple, <laughs> simplest top that I could find to show you without it being a t-shirt. Um, I was looking kind of for something that felt woven uh, a little bit different than doing something stretchy like a t-shirt. Um, and so I've got like a tank. It's got no sleeves. It does have a little bit of gathering up here, as you can see, like all the fabric is gathered into the neckline on the back. It has this um, little keyhole detail on the sides down here. It does have a little opening. So it's got a couple of details that we can do so it isn't just super, super simple, but otherwise a pretty simple kind of um, shape, okay? So I've laid this down flat so I can look at it. You could also try it on just to see where it falls on your body to get a couple of ideas of, um, again, this one I know, it obviously goes, well obviously, but it goes well below my waist. My natural waist might be like way up here, so it definitely goes out. And it kind of just, it doesn't flare, but it falls out straight, sort of down to the sides. Definitely doesn't cling tightly to the body, so that's something I can definitely indicate when I'm drawing. I printed out um, this front view of the technical flat croquis. Um, and even my printer didn't print the lines very dark, but I still notice that I can see it through, maybe you can too, I can see it through the computer paper. So I'm going to go with it. You could use tracing paper um, if that's easier. Really it's just the problem that tracing paper is then not like super nice to kind of show as you're finished drawing after the fact. So um, you could either retrace it after you use it on tracing paper or try to just be really neat. Or again, try to just do it on computer paper, which kind of saves you a step. So I'm going to try to draw this on top of my croquis, which again, I can't see super well, <laughs> but I'm going to try to do it and through the camera. Um, what you could do if it's kind of driving you crazy is you could lightly, you know, draw your croaky person on your paper, you know, and again, see how like that's pretty light, knowing that later you'll come back and erase that person's lines. You know, or honestly, if you can, you could just also try to avoid it. So really make sure that you're keeping your paper lined up. And now I can try to sort of sketch this out. Um, starting with my neckline, I'd say it's about there. It doesn't go really high up on the neck. It comes down uh, my shoulders. And when I draw, I kind of always start from the top. I start from the way the garment hangs. I don't know why I always do that. You can do it lots of different ways, but I always kind of start with the neck and shoulders and let it hang down from there. It's my sleeveless style. So I'll show sleeveless on my armpit. You could even at this point, um, you know, like here was my actual armpit but I'm purposefully dropping that sleeve down because I know this doesn't go right to my armpit. It goes a little bit below. It's a little more relaxed. So just think about that stuff now, how it hits on the body. And again, it doesn't hug in tight to her waist, which is here. I'll do this in a dotted line, right? It doesn't hug in tight. It actually goes out, especially as I'm laying it flat. Um, so I think it goes something like that. Again, it doesn't really pop out. I'm not wearing a moo, moo here. <laughs> it's just kind of straight down. And it definitely goes below that natural waist and maybe comes right across the top of the hips, okay? And it does kind of come straight. It's not very rounded, but I usually will give it this ever so slight <laughs> rounding just because I, um, it's a little more natural in the way it falls. And honestly, if you take these measurements, that's what you would probably notice that from the top here to here um, is a little bit longer. And it usually, there's the slight shaping 
it kind of curves up even on something that seems straight across, okay? So that's my basic, you know, um, shape. Pretty easy, right? And again, I just put these waste marks in for reference. If you draw really lightly, you can easily erase, you know, little details like that as you go. And then, what are some of the things we talked about, these details? So again, it does have a little bit of fabric gathered up into the middle of the neckline. And it probably starts, I'm kind of staring at it. I'll bring it closer. Probably starts, you know, here to here. So I might show that, right? And again, make sure these lines, if it's not really a seam line, try to make it lighter if you can. And I have such a heavy hand, it's always hard. But I might just like show something like that. I can try to be really light with my lines. That one's probably the darkest, right? To show that it's this uneven kind of gathering and ruching into that neckline. And if a lot of these details stress you out, <laughs> just pick something easier. Look, I made it just as dark. <laughs> um, and then what I could make sure to do is if I showed this, you know, I could have a line that was like, ruching <laughs> or pleading or tucking or whatever. I could explain what that was really easily with my pop out. And then um, something to notice, I'm like looking now, I'm like what does it do? There is at the neck, it's like, it's hard to see in this print, but it looks like there's, it's almost like a little piece of fabric comes over and it's turned under and there's this tiny, see that little top stitch? So that's something I could now show. Take this sideways. And I might also, once I'm really satisfied with my lines, come back and make them darker because you really want to make your outside lines really dark and really clear that that's the seam. Got a little line I don't want there. And now I can do just a dotted line is usually the way we indicate a top stitch, okay? So I've got a little dotted line up there, right? And let's see if it's the same thing. Same thing on my sleeves, if you can see here. There's this top stitch. So I'll put that on the sleeves and I'm keeping it, you know, pretty close to my original line because that's how it is in the real garment, right? It's just like a little bit, you know, I mean, honestly, that's probably maybe a half inch from the edge, okay? And that's something you could definitely indicate exactly. You could look at your garment and take your ruler or measuring tape and I could measure. My top stitch is exactly um, a quarter inch from the edge or a half inch from the edge and that's something you can indicate in your construction notes. And then down at the bottom, remember I have this little opening. So I could indicate that as we saw. And honestly at this point I don't, I don't need her anymore, right? I've got my scale is already set so I can kind of get rid of her. But remember how we saw they did like this number? <laughs> they showed just that little piece from the back coming out, right? You could do something like that to indicate that opening. And we could do it just a little, right? It's like this little peak. Honestly, that one probably looks more realistic, but I think they get the point. And then, again, we've got, there is no no visible stitch. Oh wait, no, I take that back. There is, it's just so hard to see in this print. There is a top stitch, it's a lot higher in. We might even pretend it's like an inch up at the bottom. So we'll kind of roughly indicate that in our drawing, my top stitch that, you know, it doesn't seem as close to the edge as the other ones do. And then there's also this like, top stitch around, around here, okay? 
And some of these details get really little, right? Really hard to see when it's really tiny. So this is exactly why you might do what's called a pop out. So off to the side, like popped out of this image, I could do a more detailed version of that. And this is going advanced for right now, <laughs> but um, it might, you know, come up later and it'll definitely help. So I'm kind of like folding this to see what that really looks like if I was gonna do a pop out of it because we shouldn't have to just wing this, look at the real garment, let it kind of show you what to do. So I could do a pop out, you know, just blow that same image up and I can explain that I'm saying it looks like um, the top stitching comes out, like at this um, angle, and continues like that. And then it's actually on this one too, on the back piece. You know, something like that. You could be like, look, if this wasn't obvious, I'm showing you what it looks like really big, that this is an opening and they're both top stitched and it kind of comes straight across here and comes down at this um, perfect 90 degree angle. Sometimes with the pop out, like it might be literally circled and, you know, indicated where it is, <laughs> or you could just, you know, show it um, separately, something like that. Um, but this is ultimately our front of our top here as a flat. Right? Um, some of my lines, again, I'm, you know, kind of pressing really hard. I'm like a little sketchy. I could try to clean it up. You want to keep it as neat as possible. Um, definitely not a lot of rough lines, really nice and neat and straight, but this is pretty much it. There's not any other details that are happening on the front. And then talking about the back, I would literally, you know, show this exact same thing, right? You could photocopy it, you could trace it. If you were doing it digitally, you would just like copy and paste. But my only difference is the keyhole back here. So like for the back, for example, say I could trace this over again and do everything and I would just erase this. And here I'm even gonna just oops, do it now to show you what I would do as I would look at my keyhole here and it's also got like a little button and if I'm really looking there's actually a center back seam oh it's so hard to see in the dark fabric but I can see it there's a center back seam that goes all the way so that's obviously something I want to talk about and this like top stitching cuts across and goes all the way up so first thing I might do then, and I could go back now to my woman, and I could use the back croquis, but honestly, the back croquis is exactly the same as the front croquis. She just has a butt and no breasts, and looks, you know, but otherwise the shape is the same. So just for scale, I could use her, and see I've got that center line. So I can just go ahead and trace that. Okay, so now this is my back view and it's two pieces, whereas the front was one pattern piece. The back is obviously two pattern pieces. And there's my center back seam and my keyhole, which isn't really like a circle when I'm really looking at it. It's just straight. It just happens to kind of pull open when you wear it. So honestly, maybe I wouldn't really want to act like it's a shaped keyhole. Maybe I just come down with my stitch opening like this. Here, let me get rid of these ruche lines that we remember we're now working on the back. And those are not there at all. It's a flat back because it doesn't need any shape. Okay, so that's basically my exact opening. And then I could show this little button on the side. and it sort of comes out about like that, okay? And here's another time where I could do a pop-out if I wanted to really make it clear 
that this keyhole was happening, I could do, you know, kind of an indication of that. Let me imagine how I would do this to show that it's sort of opening up a little bit. Um, I'd still show my top stitching coming across the bottom. And maybe I could show <laughs> that ever slight opening. I might even need to make a bigger pop out. Okay, so see how I've like kind of shown this that it comes back up into the neckline and meets, but there is a slight opening. Here's my seam and here is my button. Whereas here it was so tiny that I just filled it in. Maybe in this situation I want to leave it open so that you can really see that it's a button. And this is another time that if it's not really obvious, you could say button. <laughs> you could say keyhole, you know, or keyhole opening, something like that or even just opening, um, just to indicate what's happening there. And again, you could circle this, you could point, you could reference, whatever, okay? So that was a simple front and back technical drawing, okay? And I'm using my technical croquis as a template the entire time so that I am not just winging it. And later, say I made her a pair of pants or a skirt or whatever, they all fit. They're all to the exact same scale because I have used her as a template. Um, it's like paper dolls. They will all fit her, okay? Uh, so you can definitely do this. And like I said, start with something simple. You know, don't push yourself and we could work on details as we go.